fine, Reich. Don't worry about dying. I'm dead. That's gonna. That's not gonna get you good places. GG. Uh, was it a G G though? BG. It was good. It was good game. That's the true BM when people say BG. Oh. <laughs> um. So, anyways, let's uh let's keep going. Um. Well, I'm hearing an echo again. So let's see. Uh, setting up the initiative. You guys keep rolling garbage on initiative, which I kind of feel bad about. But uh, it's so the dwarves actually go first. So because that hallway is so long, the dwarves that come running at you spend their whole first turn, uh, literally just running towards you. Good. That leaves Reich and Stavor. You can go. This is Stavor's turn. I'm gonna uh, actually. Right can I see past? Stavor, but yes. Yeah, but can, can I see past the dwarves that are running at us to the people setting up? Yeah. Make a perception. I'll check. say to Reich then. Uh, fight the runners. I'll shoot back. Okay, sounds good. It is a little bit safer. <laughs> yeah, so, I, right. so I'm gonna charge up to the guys that are coming after us. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I'm gonna draw draw my blade. Meet the first one that uh, meet the first one there, and I'm gonna swing at them. Okay. Fucking rolls. Um, so you got oh! To... oh, Reich, my man. I don't want to raise you as a zombie, but that's how this is going to go. I got so upset my headphones fell off. And now I look like a droopy caramel man. Fucking ridiculous, dude. I'm going to have to make you a zombie to find my way out. I don't want to do it, but I will. Um, so anyways, you, uh, you guys are, are, uh, rushing up and, oh, you are just, sorry, rushing up and trying to swing at them, but unfortunately the, uh, the two dwarves that came rushing at you are not, um, are both prepared and they literally go shoulder to shoulder and throw up their shields, um, uh, kind of like wall of shield style and just, and the shields move in unison, block the two different- The studio! Uh, now it's Stalwar's turn. Stalwar, you go ahead. I am going to uh, be chill touching the people in the back. I'm going to be touching their behinds, uh, as in the people who are behind the rest. Basically, you were chill touching, not bad touching. <laughs> you touch one of the people back there. It's oh, one of these. That is, the, that is a garbo roll. But it is the injured one from Reich's, uh, from Reich's attack. No, I'm right. attacking the people setting up. Yep, and one of them is the injured one. Oh, really? Yep. Cool. Uh, I thought they got further away than that then. Yep. And uh, so you actually uh, do touch that person, and um, they don't like it, but they are still standing. Uh, it's now going to be the dwarves' turns. Those two Stop dwarves it. are now going to attack at you, Reich. Uh, Reich, what's your AC? My AC is 18 right now. Uh, no, it's Please. not. That is. It's actually a 19, uh, because all of a sudden as you're uh, in this attack, you start to feel uh, a magical presence uh, take its way over yourself. Ooh. So you actually feel, you can feel this like magical energy roll over your body. You can actually look around and see uh, a bit of a shimmer comes over you as you're like not sure what it is. But what you do know is that the shimmer that comes over you has a strange, unique color uh, to it. Uh, multicolor uh, dancing nature to it before it kind of absorbs itself into your skin that has that same kind of shine that you see the dragon marks have. Stallborn, hey. you notice the same thing on your own skin. Uh -uh. Hey, someone's a hero. <laughs> and out. actually, uh, just as that happens, the first attack that would have hit you, you look up just in time to see it coming and, and actually jump back, but not far enough to have the attack miss. And when it swings and cuts into your skin, it actually skims past your skin, deflected by the hardness of your skin itself, or whatever that magical aura is, literally protecting you, Fucking followed hero. immediately by another attack that was a total of a 17 for the second attack, uh, as opposed to the 18, which is the first one, that you're able to just barely like lean back to have it, uh, uh, it miss you. Um, I only attacked you twice. I meant to attack you four times. Don't, don't do that. I'm going to. Twice, twice is enough. Twice is nice. Twice is nice. Oh, Jesus, I rolled double natty ones. Yeah, boy. 
They have a plus five chance to hit. There's a six and a six. Yeah, boy. Don't the, hit me. <laughs> the second person goes to swing at you, and literally their their, their method to go to swing at you <clears throat> is they arc backwards and they go to swing, but unfortunately they actually get their axe stuck in the doorway to the cell that's adjacent to them. And so it's and like ah, and they pull back and they do the same ah again in the same exact doorway. So it actually puts this like nice axe notch in the doorway right there where the cell is. <laughs> it's Reich's turn. All right, um, I'm gonna go bananas on these guys. You going bananas? I don't think you're no, going bananas. Just, just plantains. Ah, oh, they're not as good. But versatile. That's better. That's that's a lot better. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use that to give this guy the old thwackaroonie. <laughs> oh You're a lich I'm, now? No, I'm I'm going to use a key point. Fuck this. I'm going to flurry of blows. Oh, that was also awesome one. It's a hit. There we go. And? Some damage. Oh, so, so you do actually uh, bash the guy, batter him up a good bit, and hurt him. Stalbert, Jotar, what do you do? I'm gonna keep chill touching the people in the back. Okay. I'm going to use a point of action. Hit. Grand. Uh, awesome. And you, uh, that same person that you had injured before. <laughs> and that's what the noise he makes as he keels over. <laughs> that that was that was just me voice acting. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be surprised. It was not a hiccup. It was acting. It was very good acting. So why I shouldn't have milk and cookies at this hour, Scott? It's only, Scott! It's only midnight. So, uh, uh, now it's the... The, the sun has hours. risen! Uh... Now the, the dwarves, so as the uh, the dwarves that are adjacent to you uh, are fighting you, uh, Reich, one of them, the one that just n smashes axe twice into the doorway, gets a little annoyed, and um, he's actually going to turn to the person that's in that doorway to speak to him. But first, the other dwarf is going to attack you twice. Don't do that. Your AC is too work. higher now, right? Yeah, yes. Oh man, it turns out... Vampiric Touch works totally differently, and Roll20, when I imported it, did not put a duration on it. It is not a one-time attack. So I thought that was different, because I thought it was a one-time attack in the old editions. I thought it was a once-per-round or something I like that. I thought it was a once-per-round okay. because it didn't... That's it, why it, I, I read it. I was like... In the, duration actually, up to a minute, so it's not still up, but... I would have got way more healing if I knew that last time and not be in such a perilous position. If you uh, if if you actually watch the VOD, I actually scroll up to read it again when it comes back around to your turn, and I go, and so I'm like, yeah. huh. Oh, I imported it from Roll20, and it just obviously didn't have the duration. Roll20, why do you suck today? So, Roll20! Uh, it says at the end you can make it again for each one of your turns, so. So, um, uh, Eric, you, um, uh, do, 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 two attacks against you. Both of them miss, you know, uh, block the first or the next one you step to the side. So the dwarf that hit the door frame twice, what he actually does is um, he actually leans over to the, the doorway there. And he says uh, to the uh, to the person on the inside, he's like, oh, you want five years off your sentence. And the guy the guy hops up and uh, runs forward. You can actually see like a really meaty sized uh, uh, half orc that's standing there. And he's nah, man, like, he's lying to you. <laughs> You're going to die if you come out here. <laughs> going to get infinite years on your sentence. And the, uh, the half work just gives like a hungry grunt. And so he's, uh, you see that the, the dwarf actually pulls out this, uh, this small, shiverish looking shard and taps it to the door. And the door no, unclicks and opens. That's not right, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should be the attack of opportunity. <laughs> this guy's pulling out. Things in the middle of the combat. This is. This seems like this is a. This is garbage. <laughs> oh! I rolled ninety twenty on that. Uh, on that initiative too. So that uh, uh, orc is actually going to be able to um, act before anybody else. But that was those dwarves' turns. The other dwarves down at the end of the hallway are still setting up. It's actually Reich's turn first. Reich, what do you say? Because the door kind of like pops open. But it's not even that dwarf that orc's turn yet. 
I just look at him. Uh, I say, five years off your se- uh, five years off your sentence means nothing when you're dead. And I'm just gonna swing at the door that uh, that um, uh, open the the door for him. That's the uninjured one, but okay. Can I please, please roll like not garbage? Action point. Hold on. Yeah. Is that your last one? Yeah. Well, at least you hit. Yeah. Oh, it's hey. good. Good. Good hit. Roll your uh, dex attack. Hey, you still roll the garbage, but you hit. And you actually uh, do a lot of damage to that guy. That's actually... Um, what do you use your bonus action for? Do you want to just add the more damage? Add the more damage, yeah. Okay, so it's enough to kill him. So, um, to drop him, I should say. So you say that to him. So there's an injured guy in front of him. You do that immediately to the one that just opened the gate for him. Roll me an intimidation check, please. Not terrible. Do you want to use an action? Oh. Wow. Oh. oh. No, I don't. I'm doing it because I'm choosing not to roll an action point. Not because I can't, because I have none left. Yeah, you tell. Yeah, mm hmm. Stalbor, you witnessed what he just said. Like, you heard him say, like, you saw this thing open. You heard what the dwarf said. You heard the thing grunt. And you heard what Reich said to him. And Reich immediately turned his attention from the one that he was fighting over to the one that was uninjured that let him free to accentuate the point. Um, what do you do on your turn? So, how many enemies are there left? There's one very injured one standing in front of Reich. There's two that are uh, still setting up down at the end. You have no idea what they're doing. Finish, finish the setting up, guys. And, and how many have... Have we only killed one so far? Or have so, we just killed two? Uh, you, you dropped, dropped one, two. right? You each dropped one, yeah. yeah. I'm going to cast Animate Dead on them. Okay. The one in front of you is not dead. The one... You, he said that we've dropped two. I don't kill the my guys. Never have. Fuck, Reich! Reich! Your morals may have just killed us! He's Ollie, a Ollie, 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 hold on. Ollie, <laughs> to be me, fair, babe. what's the range of Animate Dead? Ten feet. I was gonna say, because inside the hall. From the way it's described, yeah. I figured we I was within ten feet. Yeah. But... Guys, they're just guards. They're just doing their job. I'm not gonna murder them. I mean, I killed one of them, so one of them's dead, but... I really yeah, well, I'd want to get I, the bang for my buck. So I can't I'm, I can't control that. If this prisoner comes at me, he go die. I'm just gonna shoot at one of the dwarves. You know, I have to hmm? Which one do you want to shoot at? Doesn't really matter. It does to some degree. So one of the ones still setting up? Yeah, those are the ones I'm really focused on. Okay. God damn it, Reich. Your morals. It's a really good chance to hit. I'm ruining my necromancy. That's really good damage. Okay, um, so uh, that is going to be you guys' turns. And so this uh, uh, orc that stepped out, more or less, you said this intimidating line, and you dropped the guy that was immediately in front of him. But then, like, nothing super intimidating happened. There's still a dwarf that's fighting you right in front of you. All he did was go pew pew to somebody down the hallway, but you guys are still vastly outnumbered. So it, there's nothing to really sway him to do what you're saying, because you're already injured and you're outnumbered uh, here. It's more in his favor to uh, to go along with it. So um, he's actually going to step out and he's going to attack at you, Reich. Um, unfortunately, he's unarmed because, you know, there's no... Oh, wait, he reaches out and picks up the axe from the dwarf that's on the ground. And there's no attack of opportunity for doing that kind of stuff anymore. So thank you, 5e, for giving me the opportunity to go up and attack Reich. He's going to grab the thing in two hands and... Swing at you. This guy's going to fucking regret this. I'm going to straight murder him. He's a criminal. I don't care about killing him. So let me do this one at a time. Um, Fucking idiot. There we go. His attack roll against you is a miss. As uh, your AC is for what right now? A 19? 19, yeah. It is a pretty hefty miss uh, as he attacks you and swings and misses. So he swings and misses, and you step backwards, and I imagine you give him that steeled gaze of, I made you a promise. You'll, yeah, you'll regret this. <laughs> um, that's when he's going to like kind of like recalculate. 
And he's actually going to spend, because like I said, I rolled a 90 20 in initiative. He gets two actions this turn. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? He actually turns and he's going to attack the other creature that's standing adjacent to him. The guard? Yeah. Okay, maybe we can do business. <laughs> maybe we can start a riot. Ooh! That is brilliant, actually. It worked yesterday. <laughs> Unfortunately, um... Prison Riot! Prison Riot! Unfortunately, um, the, uh... He rolled the total attack of 13 against both you and the guard, so he just made two enemies without doing anything successful. <laughs> he just rolled like shit. That sounds like my life. <laughs> the dwarf then is going to turn and attack him back. Like, what the fuck? We just let you out of your prison. You're gonna do this shit? And because the guy's unar uh, sorry, unarmored, the dwarf actually slams the axe into him once. Uh, and uh, the guy starts, like, bleeding from, from his side where the axe is slammed into him. And a second slam uh, cuts him right above his knee and sends the guy kind of, like, keeling down to the ground, bleeding a considerable amount. The dwarf then just kind of, like, uh, finishes it off with bashing in the side of the temple, knocking him out cold um, so that he's just lying there on the ground, bleeding on the cold ground, and turns his attention back to you. Uh, the dwarves beyond you are still setting something up. Right, it's your turn. So he just fucked up that orc? Yeah. <laughs> the half orc? Well, <laughs> thanks, dude, for your meat shielding. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna swing at the uh, the dwarf. I just kind of shrug. <laughs> just like, okay, well, that was, that was useless. It's almost like a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and last time you did 13 damage. Uh, no, 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 no. Earlier you injured this guy. How much my damage? intention my intention is not to see him any key points. I'm doing the extra damage. I got that. Give me one second. Uh, okay, so this is the guy that you had hurt for 13 before, so that's actually enough to drop this guy. And so you still have your move and another attack. And there's two other dwarfs left? Uh, yeah, down over by setting up the machine. I'm going to go uh, up to them and swing. Okay. Either of them injured? Uh, yes, one of them just hit by Stalbar. I'm gonna hit the one hit by Stalbar. And you do? Nice. And he drops. Because you because you had the four on there, he drops. So um, that is actually, uh, you go up to the guy and you drop him. The last, it's actually Stalbar's turn. The other one is actually standing on the other side of this big piece of equipment that they're working on. Uh, so he has cover against you, but you can still make your attack. Uh, I'm going to walk down the hallway a bit and let me just check some things no i cannot do it uh i'm going to yeah i'm just gonna shoot over the cover if i can sure i'm not gonna do anything interesting at, at all, all. <laughs> dang it that's my turn to pan the camera away! Don't look at me! Stop! Stop! <laughs> it's a very Deadpool moment. Uh, so then that dwarf, like, as the thing goes pew, crushing past it, it looks around and sees that all the other dwarves are dead. You can see it just finishes, like, setting up the piece of equipment that's over there and, like, wrenches something shut. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it slams uh, its uh, hand onto uh, a lever, pulling it. And you can see that the machine that's in front of you planks of wood go <laughs> making it so you can't actually pass um, uh, go past this thing maybe like a, a small size person with like a good acrobatics could but this thing is now too large for you to get past it while it's uh, you know functioning right and You're then on the barricade. in the center of it uh, it actually has almost like a dome piece in the center of it that flowers open it's kind of a beautiful looking open that you see and um, it flowers open and as it's starting to flower open, uh, you see underneath it is a whole bunch of blades sticking outwards. And those blades cover almost the entire nope. uh, uh, size of the thing, which covers wall to wall, ceiling to floor. And very slowly it starts to spin right now. Uh, that's what its turn. Fuck? And now it's Reich's turn. What can I do? Can I attack him? Like, 
He's on the other side of this wall of very slowly spinning blades that are starting to, to try to gain momentum. The wall's made I, out of wood, though. Can I attack the machine? You can, yeah. Try to damage it? Um... <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I may have a plan. Oh no. It's always good when your plan has qualifying questions. <laughs> In D and D. I'm just thinking to myself, like, are there spells in fifth edition that allow for transposition? Yeah, I'm just gonna attack this thing. As in teleporting an object somewhere else? As in you and another thing teleporting. Yeah, Kieran does it all the time. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Kieran has an ability to do that. That's right. Sixteen yeah. hit it. To regular places, misty step. I mean. Yeah. No, but that's a good idea. Like right, so like I'm gonna stand in front of it and then teleport with somebody right as it comes up to me. <laughs> Some freaking Dota shit. Does it sixteen hit? Does a sixteen hit? Oh, hold on, Eric. So as you're gonna attack this grinding machine thing with your sword. Oh no. And you actually swing and hit the grinding machine thing with your sword. Roll for me, please, a dexterity saving throw with your natty one that's there. That's going to eat your sword, mate. Your, your lovely masterwork sword. So the sword gets jammed inside the thing as the gears are going, and it starts to whir, and you can feel the blade is starting to bend beneath it. And you very quickly, with all of your strength, pull the sword back right as you're starting to feel those tensions really come to. Uh, without even thinking twice, you immediately swing a second time at the machine. You do, in fact, hit it. You can do your damage. And you deal uh, some damage to the machine, but of course does not break it. Um, uh, taking a quick moment to look down your blade, you can actually see it has a slight bend to it. <gasps> it's going to be hard to get in the sheath now. Um, so you... Uh, Stalwart, your turn. What's your plan? So you said a small-sized creature of acrobatics could probably get around this thing. Oh, no. That's what you said, which I... means I can see beyond it. Oh, yes. I might, to, I might have to angle myself. I'm going to misty step on the other side. That is only a bonus action. Thanks, bro. I'll see you. And then I'll I'm going to smack it with my staff, like the back end of it. Sure. Well, so the dwarf that's on the other side is holding this thing, and he's starting to like get the gears ready to move it forward. I'm just I'm going to smack the whole like mechanism. Sure. Uh, if I can. Break it from behind. You hit. That's also my life. So uh, all of a sudden you appear... Six damage to a machine is not that bad. Yeah, you appear behind the machine and more or less uh, what we're going to describe it is you take the thing and it's where you see like the, the gears and whatnot that are working that are most likely causing the, the spinning to happen. You smash... Uh, the gears from the back side. This thing is designed because, like, the way the damaging objects works in 5e is it, it takes resist, it has resistance to damage if it makes sense. So, the front of the machine has resistance to damage. It has a lot of HP because it's made out of metals and whatnot because it makes sense, right? The back yeah. side, and certainly the delicacy of gears, does not. So, that was my thought process. So, you go to the back side and you just smash one of the gears and it causes it to jam up. So now the grinding thing is no longer grinding anymore, and the thing more or less becomes useless. So the dwarf uh, uh, is like, "What the?" And then turns around and sees you standing there, and he starts. I like, say the like a a dwarven legend of like the Grim Reaper in dwarven. I just like say some spooky like the 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 Reaper of dwarves has come for you. Okay, that's creepy as shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> could you could you don't? <laughs> Like, now you made this awkward, you know? Like I was just kind of hoping to kill you. But you made this a little uncomfortable for me. No, now I'm now I'm pretending to be your god of death, but I'm I'm doing it. Uh, unfortunately, the dwarf had thrown down his axe to finish things up, and you happen to be standing on top of where the axe is, um, because you know it's sitting at the machine and getting it to start moving forward. So he doesn't have his weapon in his hand. He's actually have to come forward and just start fall on try to fist the cuffs oh, with you. Fisty cuffs. So let's brawl, son. <laughs> Luckily, I think Star Wars health is slow enough that I could actually fuck him up with this. My AC is 16, though. Um, do you apply proficiency to a Fisticuffs attacks? I say you do. Okay. No, but I, I don't know if you do. It makes sense. It's only added if they uh, they are proficient with melee, yeah, with their unarmed attacks. 
Yeah. Wouldn't everyone start with proficiency in unarmed attacks? Because you don't you don't dishes. get it for other for other abilities that give you bonuses to unarmed attacks. You don't. It doesn't say hey, you also get proficiency. So I think everyone's proficient. It's just it's the, it's the one. Gotcha. And you know, the, that, the bonuses give you extra damage. And damage instead. is what one d two. No, it's it's one plus strength mod. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. They don't bother with D2s and D3s in this one. So, where your AC is usually 15? It's a 16 right now, yeah. 16 right now. So, the first attack comes in, and he's just kind of like, oh, and it's just like, again, costing in Dwarven. Uh, he screams out Sandstone. And there's a full-on uh, uh, straight blow to your chest, and he hits you perfectly where the hole was. Mm. And Phantom pain! Uh, well, Ow, my hole. <laughs> he hits you where the hole was, and it's one of those things where the nerves there never fully healed. And so you actually don't feel anything whatsoever. And so when he hits you in the chest, <laughs> there's a boom, and then like a. <laughs> like you don't even really stumble backwards. You take no damage from it. That I mean, is probably the best <laughs> miss description we've ever had. However, even though both of you are kind of like caught off guard by that one, he's just kind of like, and you're looking down. He takes the opportunity to uppercut you. <laughs> <laughs> And does see three points of bludgeoning damage with the uppercut. <laughs> I just imagine Rex sitting there on the other side, like, what the fuck is going you, on? You, you hear, like, on the other side. You, you, Let's do yeah. this. The machine, like, grinds slowly to a halt, and you hear just hear, like, a thump, 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 like, a off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, that was his turn. This actually leads to Reich. We're not going to waste our time at this point. More or less, Reich is going to be able to hack away at this thing to open it up, and you're going to be able to uh, to finish this dwarf off from the other time, other side. We're not going to waste our time with it because he's unarmed and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you uh, are able to just kind of like take the dwarf, you know, bash him backwards with the the staff and all of your strength, which catches off guard how fucking strong you are, and just you know smash him in the head and kind of collapse his skull, sort of a thing. With yeah. The, uh, which is very crude for Stalbor, but you know, it works. It's strange enough, he's been getting more crude ever since he met Kieran. Um, after a couple of uh, hacks of the sword to start like really breaking one of those panels on the other side, you can take your staff and just and splat, splinter apart the area that yep. was damaged by Reich, and Reich can step around it. All right, we have to go this way. So uh, I, I nod, and I, I, I pre- uh, ready myself to proceed. I say, just as a, as a side thought, something to consider, we could try to open up some of these cells and see if we can't get these prisoners working on our side, or at least working on their side with the additional support from the prisoners, or at least their confusing presence. We might be able to escape unabated during the, uh, during a prison riot. I'm going to look at the head guard on the ground there, like the, 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 the guy uh, and see if I visually see keys. So well, I, I actually point out that they were he. I, I saw the guy unlock the other door. I yeah, said, yeah. They have a cibarus shard. I'm actually gonna go pick up the cibarus shard he used to open that thing, and I bring oh. it back to you. So while you were um, uh, having this this conversation, mm-hmm. right? Um, you had uh, because you had said like this idea, and it's funny that. So when you say that, you actually hear a response saying, "Um, funny that you should say that." I was gonna suggest the same thing, from inside one of the cells. I look over. I go to the cell and look inside. Uh, you see that there is a uh, a female um, elf standing there. Well, uh, well then, I think that we might be able to help each uh, might be able to help each other out. We're looking for a distraction. We're looking to get one person out of here, and we can open up your cells. We're not going to help you guys get out of here, but if you, by extension, are able to get yourself out, then. Helps us. We won't stop you. Yeah, we won't stop you. My and we're thinning out the guards. I said elf, I meant human, but a female human standing there seems kind of uh, youngish or whatever. So um, uh, you say what you say to her, and she goes, hey, I've seen what you can do, and I'm just saying that I could probably give you a lesson or two about how to how to throw a punch. Just saying. Well, Most I don't of think these people to... here are, are criminals and belong to be, but... Some of us are innocent. I'm sure. That's irrelevant to me right now. All I need is your help to 
get to get to where I'm going, or at least you would cause enough distraction for me to get where I'm going. Where are you Listen. going? Listen. Don't worry about it. Listen. I'm gonna just point this out, though it should be pretty apparent given the situation that you just bore witness to. If I let you out, it will be an incredibly stupid thing to try to attack us. Reich, I think I could raise these if you stop giving them mercy. I think I could turn them into zombies. Who are you talking to? Don't you uh, don't you kill yours? Like that that orc is dead. Why don't you ra uh, uh, the Why don't you raise him? I want the dwarves. I realize why Eric's uh, camera's acting funny. He has green screen or something turned on. How do I do that? I don't know. Wait, no, he doesn't. Oh wait. Do I have it's, something like that on? You have a green screen on his space. He's perfectly fine for us. Oh. You, you, you've got his camera's got green screen on it. But I, <laughs> but I never set it up that way. This is literally the same exact cameras I used last night for uh, you and Dave. Yeah, because like so you can't no see my my camera is looking weird, but I don't see anything about it. Um. But wait a crap. second. Is he camera number two? Because Dave was looking weird last night. Well. <sighs> He oh, is boy. camera number two. How did you That's why Dave was looking weird last I'm night. A chroma key. <laughs> That's so funny. Three. I don't even oh. know how I accidentally got a chroma key on there. Oh, that's so funny. Let me uh, turn that off. There you go. Oh, uh, well done. Hey, I look great. <laughs> oh, jeez. I was like, why does he look so weird? Why is his shirt acting funny with the light? I was wondering why you said he looked so weird. Because he's just... I mean, he's weird, but he's normal, Eric. That's weird. funny. Oh, God, that, that was weird. So, uh, right, so. Uh, anyways, my apologies. Uh, so you said stuff to Stalbor. All right, so um, I, pick up the, uh, I, I pick up the crystal, I look at Stalbor, I say, you agree? I agree. All right, I'm going to rub it against like the little key area to see if it, it, it will pop open the lock. Um, it's not going to work with your hand. I look at her and I say, elaborate. It's magic. I, I've seen it done a bunch of times. You need a, a dwarf hand, um, preferably one still breathing. I go and I grab one of the unconscious dwarfs, drag him over. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put it into his hand, kind of maneuver it, and I'm going to see if that works. Hey, it takes you a couple of tries. It's one of those things where you're like, God damn it. <laughs> I need to get the magnetic strip working correctly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, eventually you're actually able to, uh, the, the lock does pop open. Um, but as it pops open, you can actually see the uh, light within the rock that the uh, dwarf is holding uh, goes out. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to search the other dwarfs to see if they have any similar crystals. No time. You can let your other, you can let your own out. We have work to do. And I'm just going to like, kind of keep going the way we meant to go. I going to summon the undead. The two undead creatures to assist you. Uh, I'll actually, I'll actually straight up say to Reich, I can summon undead to assist us. If I do this, then that is our backup escape plan of dying is out of the picture. I already thought that was out of the picture. To be honest with you, she said she when you said I, I would not say this anywhere near this woman. She's standing right there. Well, we, we, I, I walked away, so yeah, I was—I no. assumed we were waiting yeah, until after we walked call. a good distance away. But she follow us. She's kind of following you because she's here to assist. Then you, I guess right? I don't say that. No, you can tell her like you stay. We're talking. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, fine. Yeah, I All right, so, yeah. I, I say, my—I uh, I figured that was kind of off the table once we lost Bellum. New attack. All right. We uh, we set these guys loose, and then hopefully we'll be able to. Uh, Plus, we, we actually told her, like, hey, could you let some of the other guys out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, right. so hopefully she's doing that. And I say, and then I say, uh, so our new plan is to start up this riot. Hopefully we can use the riot as pretense to get out. Let's just hope genocide can hold his own in a, in a riot setting. And then I tap my staff on the ground and I cast Animate Dead on two of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the dwarves if I can. I killed two dwarves. So yeah, I, one of them is the guy who's I, I smashed his head in. The other one is the guy who hiccup, hiccuped. And then I make name? them skeletons so they still have their armor and their weapons. Are they? Are they? Is his name Hiccup? Um, to me, it is. So uh, uh, 
So when you look down the hallway to the woman, you see she's standing there with her arms crossed. Are you not going to let the others out? Oh, I, I can't. Okay. Elaborate. <laughs> it requires one of those... There's uh, two types of stones I see them hold. Uh, there's one type of stone that can open doors, and there's another type that, that uh, holds um, the maps, the, the layout of the facility, because many of the dwarves that work here, they don't... Um, they don't really... I told away. you. This is your matter. Let your people out. We've killed plenty. Loot their corpses. Find their shards. If not, you know, take one of their weapons. Kill more guards. Take their shards. Or We're just... not helping you. We've got to go head off. And he'll sort of like wrangle his uh, his skeletons, leaving like... So when you were walking that way, behind. <laughs> she looks to Reich and she's like, so I can just leave then? Sure. She shrugs and just walks back down and through the doorway that you guys came out of and just starts heading downstairs. Well, she wouldn't know the way the, the secret exit out, though. So She would not. She just knows that you, she saw you come up that way, so there must mm. be something down there. Because yeah, good enough. I, she is somewhat wise. That's that's logical. I was just, I was just uh, yeah. making sure that she... It would be very weird for her to know the, the, the Kyber den. Oh, yeah. That would be yeah. extremely weird, absolutely. So, cool. um, so anyways, you guys uh, are continue on without her then. You just kind of let some random person out of jail, and she walked off. Well, I had uh, hoped that she would help us out, but apparently she's just useless. She was well, it's she was, one of those things. You we, said, you need to help us get through here. She's like, I'll do that. And then he's like, that, fuck off, that, you go your own way. And she's like, I'll do that instead. So, no, it's basically the same thing. It, it just would be illogical to waste even more time. Yeah. Okay, so, let's go. You guys keep pushing on. So, um... You make your way to the uh, uh, to the next door, and do you even give a fuck about the alarms anymore? No. At this point, no. But I no will be paying here. attention to when I believe we're going to change wards and we're going to get close to the anti magic ward. Sure. Um, you know exactly what that is because <clears throat> you open up this door, and inside this door is a small room that is very dark. But inside the whole room, there's an arcway of uh, of runes. There's a lot of heavy runes in there. And you can, like, feel, like, part of you being pulled into the arcway as you are walking towards it. All right, Reich. You have to head off in that way on your own. I can't I can't go past that barrier. All right. I say be on the lookout. When I come back, it's probably going to be uh, running. And I'm going to head, uh, head through the... I'm going to actually pop a potion before I head through the barrier. Just a regular potion. Sure, drink it. Good idea. I'm actually also going to pop a regular potion because something bad might happen soon. Do you send him with the uh, the undead creatures? No, because they're gonna they're gonna not no, do will. anything. Yes, they will. They can do stuff. They're animated by magic. They would die if they were entered an area of. They would stop ceasing to function if they went through anti-magic areas. That's not how it works. The duration for that spell is instantaneous, which means you make creatures with the uh, type undead. But they're they're animated by undead magic. That's fine. So they, if they enter an, well, I don't know more, how that anti-magic more, area works. No. More to, importantly, he would lose control of the undead. He would I, lose I, control of them. Well, to, by Stalbor's logic, they would fall anyway. So he would. He, either way, he's keeping them yeah. Just by me. him. To basically, it's the entrance of this doorway. He's got defended from this side. So um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna head into the. Uh, I'm gonna head and open the door. So you go over and you uh, walk through the thing and you open the door. Um, <clears throat> and as soon as you open the door, because I, again, I assume you don't give a shit about the alarms anymore. No, uh, you rode to the two, by the way, not to the four. That explains why it was so shitty. Nope, nope, because he rolled two D four and it was still shitty. Yeah. You actually rolled <laughs> better than he did. <laughs> hey! So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go into the next room. What, what do I see? So uh, you just more or less grab the door and you pull it open. And as soon as you do so, you hear the bell going off down the hallway um, yep. because you just like ripped it open. And uh, so the bell goes off down the hallway. And so immediately you hear like a scurrying and movement of boots and whatnot. However, Stallboard did of course read the uh, paperwork about where this um, uh, Warforged was and tossed you the information. So um, do me a favor really quickly and roll me a uh, intelligence check to kind of like figure out where it is the the warforged to where you are where these guys are probably gonna have regular keys because the the magic thing wouldn't work here so that's 14. okay 
So, um, uh, the intelligence check is uh, kind of funny. I was kind of setting things up a little, a little funny for you. When you uh, open the door and you look inside, what you actually see, you do hear the bell going off. What you actually see is this whole area of the prison is a little different. It's not a corridor, but cells on either side. It actually opens up into a decent sized room that does have a couple of doors going off of it. When you open up the door and you look around, what you happen to see is a few people walking around, just walking about, some having conversations, some sitting there reading, so on and so forth, with no, uh, sorry, all wearing the same kind of clothing, the same clothing that you saw other prisoners wearing beforehand. But they're not in cells, not locked up, they're just freely walking about. Mm. So when that alarm goes off, and you come step again, fully armed and armored and hobgoblin-like, uh, you catch their attention. They're all looking at you like, what the hell is this? Are you prisoners? Uh, one of the uh, one of them responds saying, I. Today's your lucky day. I have, someone, I have someone I'm trying to get out of here. If you guys get out at the same time, no sweat off my back. Um, there's like a little unrest amongst them and uh, one of them actually kind of snorts and says oh, I don't think you understand how this works okay <laughs> elaborate <laughs> I hate when you guys just have to tell me shit <laughs> you're you're looking to bust out a mage I guess I don't know how much of a mage they are but they're here we can't leave. Why? The magic is taken from us when we leave here, and it's stored in the in the archway. If you step back through it, all the magic that was taken comes back to you in full, and it, it causes you to explode. We can't leave if we want to. We've seen some try. We've seen some get so frustrated that they step through it because they don't want to be in the prison anymore. <coughs> the fuck <laughs> okay well <laughs> this kind of was this right in the 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 next room from the doorway yep, you're so gonna... I'm, am i hearing this you, you, yeah. you, you're at least hearing reich's reactions to it because they're loud i i, I <laughs> walk over and look fuck. to the doorway well do you I walk say, do through not the... i say no do i don't walk through the book. doorway no because there's an archway so there's a big room yeah. like there's a big room <laughs> Has the archway in the middle and door on either side. You came through the first door, did not step through the archway. A little yeah, bit no, I the second door. never Fine. assumed Dalbor is going through the anti-magic archway. Yeah. So you still stay in the, step, like the middle of that room. Just so I, I can see I, in. Yeah. I step back, and I'm going to walk the, back to the archway, and I say, we have a problem. And I explain exactly what he just explained to me very quickly. I look at the runes on the archway. Is this another one of those? Uh, so we never had a, a proper ruling on whether I can dispel magic this. Uh, these these enchantments, at least temporarily. Which dispel magic? Enchantments on these archways. Oh, because you never tried before, so there was no. Well, I, well that's because you were like, ah, oh, but the rules, blah 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 blah. So I didn't even know if it'd be worth. Yeah, we trying. never. We never I made no idea if the concept there. can work. Oh, the, the con so Stallboard doesn't know whether or not the concept would work mm. either. However, I said out of game that I, it's definitely going to require a caster level check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so throw it down, see if it works. Yeah, I'm not going to cast it at highest level, but I will just use my last third level spell slot to uh, dispel magic and then uh, <coughs> see what that is. So what is this, an arcana check? Mm -hmm. Wait, no, no, it's not. It's, um, you, uh, for each spell. Oh, just an intelligence check. Yeah. Cool. I mean, that's pretty good, hopefully. I'm also going to add a, uh, action point. Please do. We need this. <laughs> 28. That's, uh, that's really, really, really good. So, actually, yeah, it's te 10 plus the spell's level. I dispelled a level 18 spell then. It's really good. So I shouldn't have added an action point, but you know. No, 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 it's, it's safer <laughs> that way. Roll me an archive check. It's one of those things, it's like, if you, if it, by my logic, like the, the action point is like extra effort. Definitely putting extra effort into that one. Roll me an archive check. That actually used to be a really douchey ability in 4E that humans had called extra effort. Which is like, I'm just gonna re-roll that. 
Extra effort, re-roll it. Fuck it. Screw you. It's because like all these other races get cool things. I'm just Yeah, like, and then man. and then it's just everyone as humans like, ah, heroic effort. Yeah. Fuck you. Mm. I failed to save. That is a heroic effort. Um should we talk about uh halflings in fifth edition? With the lucky thing? I have seen the the Bill Murray build, yes. I'm not familiar with that, but okay. So you um you I'll link you in. Okay, cool. So with your Arcana check, you are actually um, you look up and you see the the runes when you cast your dispel magic on it. You see the magic and the runes are wavering, like you haven't completely dispelled whatever this archway does, but there certainly is not functioning correctly right now. Okay, so I look at you. Uh, I am then gonna. Mm, I'll I'll just sort of like look at it. No, I, that's this is as much as I can lessen it. My assumption is that this will make the explosive effect weaker, and I can bolster you as you travel through with my magic. If you get genocide, bring him back quickly before it realigns itself. About an hour. Then I head, uh, I head off with, uh, without any more explanation. I head off. I say, uh, as I'm walking through, I say to these guys, if any of you want to try, uh, try your hand, my associate just, uh, my associate just weakened the, ma uh, the explosive magic, and I'm just gonna head past him, going right to where I know genocide is. Okay. So um, you uh, head through and start walking over to where uh, genocide would be. So as you go walking through, because this has been some time of conversation, eventually one of the doors opened up and there is a dwarf that's standing inside the area. <clears throat> and the dwarf standing in the area is, uh, calls out. And they're not wearing the same armor and everything as before. Actually, this dwarf is in much more relaxed clothing, nicer clothes. And they call out. Uh, and you can actually see a, a house uh, Kondorak mark on this dwarf, a, a greater mark even. Yep. And they call after you, Hey! Uh, what you doing in here? <laughs> I, I want to be snarky, but I say, I've come to, uh, I've come to take one of, uh, uh, one of your prisoners. If you stand in my way, you'll taste my blade. You think you're going to bust someone out? I know I'm going to bust someone out. And he looks around the room like the the uh, the, the, the uh, all the other uh, the people is there and goes, so uh, he's trying to bust someone out. Anybody else want to try too? And all the others just got kind of shake their head or just immediately go back to what they were doing beforehand. And he's like, looks like nobody wants to be bust out. Well, I'm not coming for them. All right, My well. You uh, you go about your business and do what you need to do, and I don't like this prison. <laughs> I'll go about mine and do what I need to do. This self-service system really fucks me. Right? I don't like this. Someone try to stop me, please. <laughs> that that makes me more comfortable. I don't like how not, uh, how blasé everyone is. And so All right, I'm, he's going to go gonna over to the desk that happens to be in this area. And you're going to walk past him and probably through the doorway that he just came from. Yeah, I'm just going to go to find genocide. I don't have fucking time for this. So are you uh, just going to kind of follow what he said? Or do you actually even want to call it like, has anybody seen genocide? Yeah, I'm just going to say, I I'm just going to ask around to the prisoners. Try to stay out of the, the earshot of him. Because I don't want him to know who I came for, but I'm going to ask the prisoners. So they want to know where the, where the war for his genocide is. Okay, eventually you're able to find out. It takes a couple minutes before you can find a way, because actually this region of the prison is actually pretty big. <coughs> it's actually uh, pretty large. And so uh, it's, it, you don't realize how, how much space those other prisons would have been if they just took away the cells. Those really, those really muck up the... Uh... So anyways, once you uh, are, are walking around and, and asking people, they do point you to the direction where genocide is. See, even though there aren't typical cells here, people do still have rooms here. They're just much, much, yeah. much smaller than the cells because you just go in there and sleep in them, right? <coughs> yeah, you get to hang out in the common rooms, apparently. It's like a fucking, it's like a spa <laughs> where you say, blow, where you blow up that. when you leave. I wouldn't say that. It's a... I think the kind of people who are put in magical prisons really liked using magic. So uh, as you're walking around and asking people where genocide is, uh, you actually do have um, uh, one human walks up to you and he says, you're looking for genocide. I might know a thing or two about genocide. What are you, uh, what are you trying to get done here? 
I'm trying to break him out. Looking for any to piggyback? I could care less if anyone else leaves. I, my job is to get genocide out of here. If incidentally some uh, one or two other prisoners leave, that is no skin off of my back. The person that's speaking to you is in like their mid fifties, human, um, uh, based off of like the Wait a uh, second. the accent and everything that they have. Uh, they sound like they could be on Darien. No, <laughs> no, I know who this bastard is. No, you did not leave this prison, you fucking piece of shit. I know exactly who you are. You're gonna fireball me when we leave, and I'm not about that. <laughs> Rick has no idea who this person is, but Eric is not about this fucker leaving. I know exactly who this bastard is. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, sure. You seem like an upstanding gentleman. You want to join our adventuring group? <laughs> so. God fucking damn it. I've had this guy actually as an antagonist for a couple of my games. <laughs> Does he have long, weird fingernails? Because that's my level of are they evil or not no. in Eberron, apparently. <laughs> no, they're very well cropped. Because I'm just no. going to point out that Kieran's uncle had yeah. long, weird fingernails in the official art of that character. And he's like, oh, no one thinks this guy is evil? With that sort of like manicure style? So he says, um. <clears throat> so he says, uh. So I, I can assist then. I can come along. Yeah, I, I could care less. Eric's too, too excitedly typing in chat right now. Um, <clears throat> so I, I say, I say, yeah, as long as you don't get in the way and don't kill me when we leave. If you try why, to kill me, then why would we'll... I? Why would I kill someone who's assisting me? That makes no sense. That's that's kind of an aggressive thing to make an assumption of me. To be entirely honest with you, I don't know what you're in this prison for. I wouldn't put it past you. I'm breaking someone out by the uh, I'm breaking someone out by the name of genocide. I'm just hedging my bets. Well, let me introduce you to him. He's he's quite he's quite lovely, and uh, and as he starts Great. walking over, he as he starts walking over with you, he says, "By the way, the name's Haldron," and uh, extends his hand to of shake course. yours. Of <laughs> course, I, I shake his hand. God damn it. And um, oh, oh, he leads already... you over to a room where the door is shut and uh, <laughs> knocks on the door. And uh, as he knocks on the door, uh, you you know, uh, the, you hear a noise on the inside. <clears throat> um, genocide, uh, you have a visitor. <clears throat> it's kind of like hard to hear through the doorway. You can just go in. I open the door. What you see before you is a uh, a warforged of a model that you're actually not at all familiar with. Uh, it is definitely a newer model. Um, it is extremely uh, human looking. If you took like a human skeleton and just put like a layers of metal wrapped around it, um, it actually looks very very human. It's a very newer or more advanced version of a uh, of a warforged that's in front of you. Wait, um, hold on. It has crystals for eyes. Hold on. Has crystals for eyes, and it has a few other areas in its body where there are crystals that are kind of like uh, stuck into it. But at closer inspection, you realize these aren't crystals, like shards or anything like that. These are actually um, almost seem like shards of glass that are embedded into the, the the creature. Actually, even slightly closer inspection, you realize that they almost look like they're sticking out of it, like they were jammed in uh, somehow. Uh, but not like a weaponized, like uh, sh you know, spiked armor version. Just like some pieces kind of shoved into it. Um, you can see that uh, the quality of metal used on it is actually not a metal that you can identify just based off sight. Um, but uh, he's sitting on the floor and just sitting there with his, his uh, I want to say his eyes closed, with the closer eyes, so there's crystals there kind of looking down. <clears throat> I say to him, you're, you're the, uh, the one designated genocide? Yes. I was sent to get you out of here. Come with me. It looks up at you and says, why? To be entirely honest, I don't know why. My reason for breaking you out of here is because someone else uh, has requested of me. And I want some, uh, something from that person. We've made, put, the, put the pieces together, uh, together enough that it should be safe for you to break out. I can't promise it will be uh, entirely pleasant. My friend is uh, 
uh, uh, uh, my friend uh, has disrupted the portal outwards. So any explos uh, the explosive nature of the exit will be uh, will be substantially lessened, and he'll be able to bolster you on our way out. Well, that so, sounds lovely. Is this Haldren? Yeah. So this may be our only chance for you to escape. I need you to, uh, uh, we need you alive. Obviously, I'm not going to drag you out of this place. I am, if I'm being entirely honest, I'm none too excited about the prospect of breaking someone out with such a on-the-nose name. But if you would come with me, we'll take you to safety. Um, the Warforge stands up. But again, it's not like it stand. It doesn't stand up in even like a human-like way. The way that it's the it, because of just the sheer control over its muscles or what would be muscles that it has. It actually, yeah. from like a, a, a comfortable sitting, like Indian-style position, uh, or like half lotus, whatever position that it's in, uh, it actually is able to just its feet come down and it stands yep. up, no problems. And uh, it's one of those like eerie things that you get when you're but, dealing with a warforged. Right? This is the worst. <laughs> And so when he stands up to its full height, Reich is actually pretty tall, standing at like six foot six. Mm -hmm. uh, this this Warforged in front of you is actually shorter than you. It stands at an exact to the measurement six feet tall. So, um, and, uh, or however many millimeters that would be, if you care, Ollie, feel free to translate. Six inches. I don't do it by millimeters. <laughs> just, just the article did. Yeah. Whatever, whatever makes you happy with these And I, we use centimeters here, but I don't know. I don't understand that either. You times that, I, by, you times that by 10. That's how many millimeters. So no, I, you know. You're welcome. I just taught you. <laughs> I just taught you the metric system. So, uh, you, uh, <laughs> so you make your way. Th so, uh, he stands up and, um, uh, looks to you and says, I'm not worried about the explosion, but if I'm needed to be somewhere else, then I will go somewhere else. And Haldren's like, I'm not either, not anymore at least. And is uh, is happy and to to turn. I turn to him and I say, I turn to him and I say, no, I want to point out the fact that he did not dispel the runes. We were unable to do that. I, he believes that he just left. blast. That's fine with me. I've been working on a spell while I've been in here. I just haven't had an opportunity to to uh, test it. I've been um, working on a spell that I believe would be able to. When the blast happens, it's a type of, you know what. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. Sounds good. I, I, I What I have heard of this guy, I mean, I, I'm pretty well versed in history. And he's he very always famous. said it was his first name. <laughs> but you yeah. can roll me a history check with disadvantage. Uh, I want to try. Yeah, it. you might have like seen an etching of him or something. Oh, how much longer are you going to be going, Scott? Yeah. Uh, not terribly. Cool. I was just want to know if you want to take another break before we finish. Uh, uh, no clue who that is. So you um, uh, start walking out with them as you go walking so, back your way through, please. I, I, well, I, I, before I step out, I say, hold on a second. Just in case there is an explosion, I want to be out of the blast radius. So I'm going to head out first. So as you go walking back through and you go into the other area with the dwarf is behind the desk, the dwarf looks up at you, uh, gives you a slight smile and then um, sees who is walking up uh, behind you. And as they're out walking up, as he sees who it is, he, the dwarf says, I don't know who you are. Do you know who they are? I know who he is, pointing at, uh, pointing at you on the side. Could care less who the other guy is. It's a lot of blood on your hands. Listen. I, hey, listen. <clears throat> you, you try your best. And there's either going to be blood in your hands uh, leaving uh, those that you kill before you die. This is a dwarf. Those that you kill before you die. Or there's going to be uh, blood in your hands from those that are killed after they make it out. I can't stop you. That's not my job. God fucking <laughs> right. I'm just going to ignore him and go. <clears throat> Reich always already racked with guilt about doing this, but I'm in too deep. Okay, so we are needing Stalbor for this uh, next portion. So um, Reich is going to be the one that walks forward. And again, the, the thing is like flickering 
uh, off and on. It's not like a set like set pattern of off, on, off, on, off, on. But it, it does have like a flickering, like a dim moments, then like a, a moment of darkness, then like a brighter again, then dim moments. You know, no set pattern to it. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna just step out and I turn to uh, Stalbor. I say, This is Genocide, our ward. This is Haldren. I think he said his name was. Uh, um, he's also gonna try to get out. Good luck. <laughs> would you, uh, would you do? Uh, you said you were going to try to bolster. Uh, what's his face, right? It's more what I do after you explode. Okay, well, <laughs> we're doing our best here. <laughs> so let's what's step your back. What's your plan here, Ollie? My staff has certain spells on it. it does doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's step. What we're gonna step. <laughs> a Stalbor takes a very big step back, so he's on the other side of the chamber, so he can watch the door. But there's no, there, there's like no timing to the to the flickering. It's inconsistent. Yeah, exactly. Well, there, you can try to like time it out or whatever, but it is, as you just said, inconsistent. So. Okay. So I'm gonna one do at a time. Best. Yeah, one at a time, so you don't, you know, overdo each other's explosions. Yeah, it might be area of effect, which would suck. So, are you gonna go first? I would say, uh, I would say, um, genocide first, just because he's probably more hardy. So, genocide, come. So, before you, Reich? Yeah. Well, Reich right first, because I have no. Oh, okay. Reich okay. first. So, Reich first. So, Reich goes stepping through first. Do you try to like uh, time it, or do you just securely walk I just step through? Step there. Okay. So, as you go to step through, magic was in fact taken from you. What magic? Step through. Huh? What magic? Uh, the magic that is in your hands, the magic that's in your spirit. Your key is, in fact, a supernatural ability. It's, it is yeah, a supernatural ability. pretty bullshit. No. It is in Eberron, at least. I also have a ring of protection. Uh, yeah. Not really worried about items. But it, it is, in fact, a supernatural ability. So as you go to step through, and you do it just like, pfft, whatever, and you go to step through, you're actually going to be bashed with your own key coming back into you. You do, sir, have to make for me a constitution save. I only have one key left. Does that matter? <laughs> it actually does. But you also uh, have that, just your hands. Are just... Sorry. You Eric? Eric? Shut the hell up. But it was worth it. What? <laughs> so, Sometimes you got to take the hit. Yeah, so as you, you Eric it, just uh, fuck with the algorithm. Just just for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you, uh, you step through. And uh, and all of a sudden, you can feel your magic coming back into you, exploding back into you with a lot of force. Uh, you're actually not going to take much damage from the um, uh, from it re-entering your body as it forces its way in. Oh, my soul. <laughs> you said one key left? Yeah. Burn my soul. <laughs> it's nine points of damage as it bashes its way back into you. Not bad. I can not live with bad that. At all. Okay. Um, next one that's oh. next oh. one that's going to step through is actually going to be uh, genocide. So, so does it like explode out or does it just hurt me? So it literally uh, the archway itself. My apologies, that's a really good point. I didn't describe it. So the archway as you step through, all of a sudden the runes glow bright for a second, even if it, overall it's rather dim, and you can see just like a pulse of energy come through the entirety of the archway down towards you as you step through. It like smashes into you, almost like force damage. Um, though it's untyped, almost like force damage, and it, uh, and it hits you as uh, you step through the uh, the archway. And it hurts considerably. No, it is actually typed. My apologies. It's it's specifically radiant damage. Um, gotcha. um, so, anyways, next one that's going to step through is actually going to be genocide, and so genocide steps through. There's no care to it. Genocide just walks through, and as genocide walks through, you can actually see the archway. Light in there's like again, there's no timing to it because you didn't, so it doesn't, it just steps through. So, um, there's no timing to it, and again, it's just a huge, heavy pulse happens all at once, and it smashes into this thing. Actually, it hits this uh genocide so fucking heavily that um, it actually causes a blast of force outwards. Um, Ollie and Reich make uh reflex saves. I did explicitly say I was as far away as possible. That is true. And so, Ollie, you actually get advantage on your reflex save. Thank you. I'm going to do a dexterity save. Is that okay? No. You just. Oh, <laughs> shit. It wasn't okay. I'm using an action point. 
I'm I'm already fucked, but you gotta save some face. No! Why has that always happened to me? Is 14 enough? So uh you guys both are so Eric, you're gonna take half, so you take three. No, I take none. I have evasion. Ah uh and Reich, you take uh I imagine you just like backflip over the, the blast. <laughs> and, you know, it's like when Out of here. <laughs> So, uh, and Reich, you just, you take six, sorry, you saw where you take six points of damage, so you're fine. Mm -hmm. Um, however... It's not fine to a wizard. However, genocide, uh, as that explosion happens inwards, you actually saw as genocide started stepping through, you see the actual, uh, genocide's body crunching inwards and getting even more damage than it was before, and then when the explosion outwards happens, like, literally crunches him into himself to the point where you don't even know if he could be able to walk afterwards. Then the explosion yeah. outwards happens, it blows his body back into more or less the shape that it was beforehand, and then he just oh, drops on the ground. I, I... Put my staff on like his Don't chest. Worry, he falls forward, so he's outside. Yeah, of his I, I drag him forward like a couple of feet, and then I uh, cast Revivify on him. Okay. Revivify. Yay. Okay, and all of a sudden you put the thing on there, and more... describe yeah. to me how it works. In I've done shot. Revivify before, oh, uh, yeah. but I just sort of, I just sort of uh, press quite hard with the staff onto his chest, and all the the, the dark magic sort of you see fade. Uh, flow from him, or from the staff, not even staff, or into uh, him. Okay. He doesn't seem very concerned about this. Nope. He's watching Genocide crumple up and fall and, and do this. And when, back. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, sorry. And when Genocide uh, comes to, all of a sudden, it's like, clearly damaged, but still alive. Uh, very damaged, but still alive. Uh, and you see like the, the flicker for a couple of moments and the crystals in his eye, that it has for eyes getting its glow again. You hear it mutter to itself, that's two. And then uh, leans itself, like it, you can see like once again, its hands are on the ground and it just kind of like its feet tuck up underneath exactly where its hands are holding. And then it just stands right back up, no problem. I hate this. <clears throat> so, I look at, Pat, at Haldren and I say, uh, we can't promise the same sort of service to you if you don't survive the, uh, the tread. Um, Haldren the whole time has been staring at the runes and like watching them. It's kind of like, what? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, you might want to uh, step back. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to step back and just sprint down the hallway a little bit. Uh, Stelbo actually <laughs> just starts walking away from this, the room entirely, like down the hallway with his zombies. So what Haldrin ends up doing is uh, starts muttering something as, uh, as he steps through. So he's muttering something, and you can see like a couple of different hand motions happening. Uh, Haldron has no books on him or anything like that. You can just see he's kind of muttering, and he's like really concentrating as he starts doing hand motions. Does uh, Stalbor watching? Is he like I walk away from? Explosions. He's actually turned away. Yeah, well, badasses walk away from explosions. Yeah, cool guys don't look at explosions. So <laughs> as the as the energy starts to come down uh, at uh, Haldron. Haldron, who's been doing these hand motions, saying these mutterings, all of a sudden Haldron's gonna like throw one hand up, and you can see like where he throws his hand up. All of a sudden, like the radiant energy that's coming out of it starts to turn uh, from radiant to energy, changes colors until now it's turning into like a blue, like a heavy blue with red curling off of it. It takes a couple moments to realize what's happening, but you realize the radiance there is actually turning into fire. And then with one hand reaching over around the archway, like making an arching motion itself, you see most of the radiant energy blasting towards him is actually converted into fire damage. And it blasts into him, uh, same as all the other ones beforehand, and starts like uh, bashing into him. And it is not a small blow by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and he takes the hit, and after it hits him, uh, instead of it blowing outwards, he actually, as it comes into him, and you can see he's like he's like wrenching his pain, uh, his face with pain, and he's kind of like you know he's keeling over with the pain. He's actually holding his hands together very tight like this. And as the uh, as it, the moment where it pulses and would explode outwards, at that same exact moment, he actually turns around and aims towards the inside of the uh, uh, of the prison that he was in beforehand, and opens up his hands. And instead, you see that huge arc of explosion of fire. Uh, bursts outwards and into the room that he just left with uh, with Reich. And tons of fire just ripping throughout the room and sets the entire room in there on fire, setting a few people inside there on fire. You can actually see just like havoc and whatnot happening inside there. As again, the explosion oh. instead of going outwards goes that way. 
and uh, yeah, he stumbles backwards from the the force of all that stuff, and like it takes a couple moments to like catch his breath, like oh, oh, um, thanks, and um, and uh, straightens himself up, duffs off his robes, which are not singed whatsoever, um, dusts off his robes, and uh, uh, starts walking, following after you guys, though admittedly has a bit of a limp to him. Yeah, so we're gonna head back the way we came. Okay. Um, the guys, <laughs> exactly, yeah. You guys start heading back the way that you uh, had come beforehand. Um, unfortunately, as you do so, um, you can see that there are a lot of dwarves that have uh, been lining themselves up in preparation for you before you got to where it was that you were uh, going. So when you get to the, the, you walk through this first corridor, it's empty. Nobody's there. You step around a couple of corpses and stuff like that. You get the two undead with you, no problem. Uh, other people are now realizing that this is a legitimate prison break. They're like, let us out! Hey, us too! Hey, us too! <laughs> Bang on the metal. Let us out! And, um, and, uh... Mm. I, would love to, I would love to let you out. If you could be father, but... <laughs> um, so, uh... But when you actually get to the stairwell, and who's the first one to step in? I would let Reich relead after a while. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm just gonna take the lead. Okay. So um, uh, when Reich steps in there, to, is leading in. You step into the stairwell. You can see that on the stairwell, there are a ton of dwarves and a couple of warforged that are on the stairs, prepared uh, to combat with you guys. And they have all sorts of weapons, uh, ranged weapons, prepared up to attack at you. They have shields at the ready to. Um, uh, other dwarves are standing about them. Have shields at the ready to try to defend those from any attacks that come downwards. You guys are clearly outnumbered. Like by a lot. Probably. So this is down on a stairwell. Yeah, this is uh, out never probably eight to one. Is it a straight stairwell or is one of those curved one? It's uh, the same straight. exact stairwell you came up beforehand. So Reich, you see this first. What do you say? I think for a moment, and then I'm going to turn to Haldren and I say, "This might be a little bit. Uh, this might be a little bit too much of an ass, but no chance that you have any." Uh, the uh, spells that you you have any spells available that can you know do damage in a in a to a group oh um yeah just uh, give me a moment it's been some years uh let's see what i can do here he steps forward looks down is like ooh uh <laughs> yeah yeah i hey i i get an idea um let's let's back back through the doorway and like go Stop back it. into like the area you guys were before uh, assuming you guys actually follow his suggestions mm -hmm. uh, like yep. out of the stairwell and he's yeah. like um, just one second and steps back into the stairwell and shuts the door behind himself so he's in the stairwell and you guys aren't and you start to hear uh, encanting happening inside there I we're just gonna sit I'm quietly very far away from the door yeah we're gonna actually we'll step back from the door and just wait quietly <laughs> You feel um, uh, a combination of vibrations underneath your feet um, from loud slamming sounds going on, uh, as well as feeling heat rolling through the hallway of where you guys are. Uh, it is uh, kind of intimidating, the noises that you hear and the screams of pain and horror that are happening inside there. Um, but after about a minute or so, no place like home. Things, things do kind of quiet down a little bit. And uh, the door, which is now completely charred and singed and is mostly kind of just ash, uh, you know, you can see the guy tries to open the door, but as like he pulls the, the door handle pulls open, it's, and he's like, um, it's clear. And you can see like he's sweating a little bit, like he's clearly like used a lot of uh, effort to do whatever he, it was that he just did. Very well. Oh, right. You do choose useful ones. I don't know. I'll lead Zo uh, skeletons first. I keep calling them zombies, but they're skeletons. I say, thanks. <laughs> and then we continue. So uh, he's walking down uh, with you guys, and he does. He will actually turn to you, Stalbar, because now he's kind of realizing that you're a very different caliber of person than Reich is. Hmm. He actually says to you, why is it you're releasing... Uh, it's kind of quiet so that genocide can't hear you. Obviously, Reich is there. Why is it that you're releasing genocide? Because uh, we would ask to. Who was it that had asked? That's something you're going to have to ask genocide once he's been delivered. 
All right, fair. What's the state of the war? It's over. Been over for a while. Yeah, because that one just looks confused. <laughs> so it hasn't rekindled? No. Hmm. I honestly thought it's it's the year 1000, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the year 1000? Yeah. Yeah, it just, just turned over. Yeah. I honestly expected the conflagrations of the war to have rekindled and to be roaring uh, in all their bright glory. But it seems as though peace has finally made its way through. No, no, not peace. Just not war. Yeah. Probably the best way to put it. How, how does uh, On Dare fare? It fares. Which one is On Dare? Uh, I, I say it fares. The queen is uh, has kept a hold. I I don't really understand the politics of On Dare, but even I can understand that she's more of a, uh, uh, my understanding is she serves more as a figurehead than a true power source. As is the case with most hierarchy uh, with most monarchies, right? Indeed. Um. <clears throat> uh, very well. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to returning to my my homelands. Oh, and um, uh, how is Eastern on there? Sorry, Western on there. I look confused. Uh, or uh, yeah, I, I just I, I'm still continuing, but I say Western on there. Uh, it takes you a moment to remember, but you, both of you guys recall uh, Odette always referred to what's now known as the Eldine Reaches as Western on. Oh, you mean the what? It, what are now referred to as the Eldine Reaches? Ah, that answers my question. Um, please don't let me slow us down. And, well, yeah, um, I would continue the whole time, just conversate. Mm. I'd actually say that uh, I'd actually say to him, um, if you don't mind my uh, if you don't mind my asking, uh, were you brought here for actions during the war? I brought here for being loyal to my country. I was uh, I'm noble born to or, on there, and I did exactly as my queen asked of me in every way. And unfortunately, when trying to save face uh, at the tail end of the war. My name was dragged through the dirt so that she could save her own. I don't blame her entirely. It's kind of the politics and how things function. I don't seek revenge against her or anything like that, if that's a concern of yours. But I could, frankly, care less what your intention is with On Dare. I have services of my own to attend to. But I just, I was more curious. I understand that many people brought here were supposedly... You know, you always hope that the people put in prisons are the people who deserve to be there. But I'm finding as I get older that that's not always the way the way of the world. Justice is more fickle than that. It is, isn't it? And taking someone who is born with with uh, magic in their blood and locking them in a place where they can't even feel themselves is is inhumane. This whole prison is handled in an inhumane way. Locking people in boxes. How is that supposed to... This is a conversation that I'm sure you don't care to engage in, and I'm sure this isn't the right time. Please, which way was next? Uh, yeah, so I, I'm just going to keep walking as we're having these conversations. We're going down to the same way we came in. Yeah, exactly the same. And, and there are many times where he like goes to start a conversation with you, and then ends up backing out of it. Where it's just one of those, like, uh, you're... And, and it's not like one of those, you can tell that he's not, like, looking down upon you because you're a hobgoblin. That he just knows there's not much conversation to have. Exactly. It's just one of those, like, who are you? You know, you can't yeah. change these things. We have no <laughs> idea who each other is, and we're just kind of like, hey, thanks for breaking me out of prison. I'm making polite conversation with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, but I, I won't... I'm, I'm very much going to... Uh, I'm very much going to not force conversation. I'll answer politely. And I'll make it quite clear that he doesn't have to make conversation with me if he doesn't want to. I will actually, during this, go to genocide and just be like, can you drink? I can, but... Why? I hand him a greater healing potion. He looks at it, and it looks a little baffled for a second. What is healing. this? Healing. Let's just say the way out of this place is filled with demons. That's interesting. And he drinks the healing potion. Glug, 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 glug. And uh, it's funny, because as you see strength come to him, Stalbor, you feel something different about yourself. 
um, you actually, like, literally, as he's drinking the healing potion and he's gaining, like, strength back to himself, mm. you actually feel different. Um, it's hard to describe. You, like, you feel more. Um, there's, like, a thumping in your chest that is usually rather quiet. There's a little more color to your skin than there usually is. You can feel something different about yourself. You actually feel more, you feel younger. Like a lot, right you don't. You feel a lot younger, like, like how you did when you were younger, I should say. It's, you feel more alive. Yeah, after he does that, Stylebore is going to actually walk to sort of the back of the party. Wright can clearly tell he's thinking about, so he's distracted. The zombie, the skeletons are going to be in front, mm -hmm. so like leading the vanguard. Um, How close are the skeletons to him? Uh, I'd say we'd be walking quite close, so within like 15 feet. It's one feet. of those funny things, because as that happens too, you can actually see that your skeletons start to walk a little strangely, like... And uh, then they eventually collapse to the ground and uh, start convulsing and making these weird motions. And I imagine this grabs everybody's attention, and so everybody stops and watches. And uh, Genocide also stops and slowly turns and slowly looks down at them. Okay. Can you turn this off? Hmm. I'm not even entirely sure what this is, but it is not something I can control. One of the skeletons lets out a scream of pain, which is strange because it's a skeleton. It's silent, yeah. Right? That's, um, and that's when that's you realize, it, that's when you realize there are sinews and stuff like that on the skeleton starting to reappear. You actually are watching uh, uh, muscle tissue and flesh and, and even an eyeball appearing while the skull is still not full. Whack! <laughs> yeah. Crunch the skull as, in. As, as soon as that happens, I step over to the other one. Just, no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> I know what they want you for. Now it all makes a whole lot of sense. Interesting. I'll be entirely honest. I kind of want you for myself. But we have business to attend to. Let's let, Let's get out of here. This is strange. Haldren is honestly has never seen anything like this before. And he's seen a lot. He actually took a several steps back and has this look of like just horror on his face. And when you guys say that and you say those words, he's just like, right to that way then. And like immediately yeah. like walks past you guys. <laughs> and so it's like walking forward. So actually the first one that, uh, so as he goes walking through the doorways and whatnot to step through, the first one that sees him on the other side is going to be uh, uh, Bellum. And Bellum, so the first one to see him is Bellum, and Bellum's the first one that he sees stepping through the other side. And with that, we're actually going to stop this session tonight um, for the rejoining of Bellum and everything next week. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, going through the deepest and easiest areas of... of uh... That could have been really bad. Yep. But we just fumbled our way through, and that's what D and D is. Well, it's just how heists work in D and D. Well, it's funny because like this, the way it's designed is specifically this area. So the bottom part of the prison isn't entirely used for reasons that don't need to be announced for this part sake of this campaign, right? Because mm. I always like to keep ideas for if I use these same facilities for sure. in future games. So um, not all the bottom areas are used for different reasons. If you didn't know about the secret entrance, there is no fucking way in hell you would ever be able to get to it because you were already like there. It made things a lot easier. It's like they're For not sure. prepared to defend that area. That's the low security area. And that's so, why it works. Yep. So anyways, um, you guys, um, cool. Um, yeah, very cool. I hope you enjoyed genocide. Uh, I'm oh, I'm very much going to enjoy the genocide storyline. Yeah. I'm more scared of Haldren. Yeah, I'm excited that Haldren's in yet another Everon campaign. Uh, I have to admit to everybody that, um, that, 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 that. You may have run him before. 
I hate probably every Eberron campaign ever. <laughs> oh, he has he's a such favorite. an interesting character. Like, he's like, because he's not necessarily evil. He's just ruthless. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about it later on. We'll worry about it later on, right? But I will say, I will spoil that. I think there may be a YouTube and or Patreon thing about him probably at some point in the future. hey -o. Uh You know what? Um, I will save that story of, of uh, running genocide for um, uh, probably a war story or something like that. So, because I love yeah. genocide. Not genocide, sorry. Haldren. Haldren. I love yeah. Haldren. But anyways, all right. Uh, Ollie, who are you? How can you find you? I'm Ollie. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Ollie Rant. Also, uh, twitter.com slash Ollie Rant, where I post art and then games. So I might play more Dad of Boy tomorrow because I really enjoyed it and didn't really get to play it very long because I went and made some brownies. Um, and then on Sunday, I started my new thing, Sundays with Ollie, which is sort of a co-op chill thing where I'm going to be playing some sport ball related games this Sunday. Uh, and then uh, Wednesdays, I almost got Sting. I do my thing. If you haven't checked out Yavaskia yet, it is the best it's ever been. And uh, there's going to be a sailing stuff soon, which will be interesting because, you know, we run things in very different ways. Um, and then, uh, Eric, who are you? How can we find you? Did you forget your brother's name for a second? Um, I do more often than I care to admit. I'm on the twits at Kunsai64. Uh, I'm on the Discord. You should join the Discord if you're not already a part of it. We're very active. Um, and watch us here Fridays from usually 10.30 Eastern Standard to 1.30 Eastern Standard. And uh, yeah, that, that's me. Um, so what was I about to say? Crap. Where can they find you? Yeah, yeah. Derek, Google it. You can find me. Shit, I was literally supposed to say something, but I forgot about it while I was waiting. Oh, no. Hold on. Give me a second. I don't want to give you a second. That's yeah, I need bad. to, to I have... I have cold pizza that I want to eat. I need oh, to pee. Do you know what? It's not getting any warmer. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I can't argue with that at all. Fuck, oh. I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, well. Probably was a lie. No, it wasn't. You know, I call that, that sort of experience, I call that simming, because that's exactly like when you're a, a sim and you delete what they're going to do, and they're like, da 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 da. Uh -huh. They just stop. That that's exactly what you just did. I was going to make a bad joke starting with, well, every day I play dad of girl, but, but then that was just a bad joke. And then I was going to say something. Fuck. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Uh, I'm just going to boo you. Boo. <sighs> boo. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I remembered what it was. I remembered what it was. If you're still here, it was a um, uh, big shout out. Thank you to uh, to Unfunny One. Unfortunately, unlike Bits and all the other stuff, uh, you cannot see uh, when donations are made. So, big shout out. Thank you to Unfunny One for the uh, for the twenty dollar donation to be able to apply the shield to both of the characters during that big fight. So, very much appreciated and thank you. I remembered. It just took me a minute because I'm a terrible person. <laughs>